That's Father Friday. So we're back here in the sacristy of St. Mary Magdalene and uh, a little smaller sacristy for such a big church, but it gets it the work done. And here today, we're going to have your first question uh, about the sacristy. And so the question was, uh, I hear the priests when they get vested, that their prayer is attached to it. And that is actually true. This is true. Uh, it's changed over the centuries, but today I'm going to show you each of the, the priest's vestments and, if I can remember, the prayers that go along with it. Come on over. So here we are in the closet of the different vestments. So the things we're going to talk about are kind of up here. Some actual um, sacristies. So the sacristy is the place... Uh, where we could say the sacred things are kept, or kind of the, the vestry is some place where you vest, all kinds of different words. This is the place where we have all of it together. And um, sometimes you'll see a big kind of table that they'll have in a sacristy, and that's where each of these are laid out. And so the one you put on last will be on the bottom. So you have this, and then the stole, and then you have the rest of the undervestments that are kind of placed, and as you put them on, you go through from the table and use them. We don't have that space or ability here, so we're normally here hung up. And so when we come, we just grab each one and go. The first thing normally, <clears throat> pen, normally I take the pen out. Sometimes you need it during mass, and so I put it in my pocket. If you leave it here in this pocket, then you have to kind of like go under and try and get in. And so sometimes you'll see that during mass. If I leave my mask or I leave my pen and I need it for something, I'll go digging in my vestments. Um, so normally I take that out. Um, if I have a phone, normally those are taken out and placed on the side. And then especially if I have a watch, you'll see a lot of priests take it off uh, since this is entering into the mystery of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is leaving space and time. And a lot of times we'll leave the timepiece out. So sometimes if you forget, you'll see a priest as he gets to the Eucharistic prayer, take his watch off and place it in his pocket. Um, so I'll do that as well. And then we come to the first vestment. But the first is what we call the amice. So the amice is uh, a covering that's used. And as you know, uh, it's kind of a, a large piece of cloth. And if you wear something around the neck, when you travel, imagine walking all these different places, this is something that would be the one that would get dirtiest the most. And so they would use this as a way to catch <clears throat> and be easily cleaned. So any sweat or anything like that. And so you'll see the, the religious oftentimes they have the habit where it comes from where they'll touch the top of the, the head first and then they'll bring it down. So you'll see diocesan priests sometimes do that as well. Um, and then the prayer that goes along with this is, Lord, if you want to see it in the visual, Lord, place the helmet of salvation upon me and defend me from the assaults of the devil. And then it's tied around. <clears throat> And then some people will, the, some of these are made so you just tie it, and as it ties, it just comes kind of mostly covers. And then some you'll see actually tuck it in um, to kind of tuck it in around, and then it comes here through the center. And so then you have the placement, the amos. Now, sometimes you have to be careful because if you don't place it just right, this part will come way up and you'll be able to see the black underneath. But all of this is a covering of the priest, uh, his vestment. So now the priest disappears, and it is Christ who is now presiding. That's kind of the idea. And this is the first step with the amice. So we finish the amice. And once the amish is, amice is amish, the amish, the amish, the amice is done, now you have the owl. So the owl is just this piece that we call uh, kind of from the Latin word for white. And uh, you'll have different kinds of alves. This is one that is made for the amice, so it's a, kind of a square neck, and it's one piece of cloth, kind of like you know Jesus's one tunic um, that was seamless in some one of the one of the descriptions. Uh, others you'll see they um, they kind of velcro, so some will, will place it and then it'll wrap across. So that's another kind, but this is one that is kind of put on like a sweatshirt. And the prayer that goes with it is purify me, O Lord, and cleanse my heart. Purify me, O Lord, and cleanse my heart, that washed in the blood of the Lamb, I may come to eternal joy. 
So that is uh, the prayer that's prayed as the alb is placed. And you always got to watch this bottom part because like I said, sometimes if the amos rides up, you'll be able to see the black underneath. And so that is the placement of the alb. So, so far you have the amos and the alb. Next round, the cincture. So the cincture is just kind of a, another word for belt. And I like to tie mine this way. I learned this uh, from a priest down at St. Joseph's in Columbia. And it just kind of unravels itself quickly when you do that. So it's a nice way to have it. At olden times, this was, it actually serves as a belt as well, but it also has the spiritual prayer, fasten the sanctuary of purity around me, O Lord, and extinguish my earthly desires. The virtues of continence and chastity may dwell within me. And the way it's tied here, it allows for the next garment to also go through these loops. And so that is the cincture. So we have the amos, it kind of protects and can be easily washed. We have the alb, that is the general uh, white that goes over any undergarments. And then you have the cincture, the cincture, the belt. The next piece is the stole. So the stole is normally, uh, you'll see a priest kiss it out of reverence for his office. And after he kisses it, he'll place it over his head. Now, this is something you can always tell. This is from the old Roman um, distinctions of, some would say even in the military. Like the military, they had different distinctions, the way they wore things um, is how you distinguish different ranks. And so the, the deacon, you'll see him wear the deacon stole that goes across. The priest will have one that looks like a yoke that comes over uh, and placed uh, over his chest like this. Now, when you place this, that's uh, replace the stole O Lord of immortality, lost by the actions of my first parents. And that's the, the first part of this, recalling that which was lost by Adam and Eve, that although unworthy I may be to celebrate these mysteries, I may gain eternal joy. And so as that uh, prayer is said, the stole is placed on as well. And this is kind of the general base for any of the um, sacraments that will be celebrated. Uh, you can also wear the cassock and surplice, which is another... So, for example, my cassock, which is here, uh, which I'll wear at funerals or for baptisms, and then the surplice that goes over it, kind of a, a long white shirt. And that has its whole other history. Really fascinating if you look at it online. But for this, once the stole is placed, if I'm doing, um, whether it's a marriage outside of Mass or a baptism, I can wear this. Um, uh, Eucharistic adoration, any, any kind of sacrament, I can do it. And then, for example... I can wear the coat, which is my favorite. It's like a cape. Um, so this is the cape that we would wear for Eucharistic adoration. And so it's placed around over this these base vestments. But for today, the next thing that we're going to do is if we were celebrating Mass uh, or a nuptial Mass, the next piece will be the chasuble. And so now we have the final, the chasuble, the final piece of this. This is the final covering of the priest. In the olden days, it was kind of a, a general covering as the, as the priest traveled, and he would place it uh, before in order to cover what was underneath so that Christ could come out even more. So you'll see here, in this particular vestment even has the, the look of a yoke. As the prayer is, you know, O Lord who said, my burden is easy, my yoke is light. Grant that I may bear it well and give you thanks. And so this is uh, what finally covers the priest so that Christ himself can be the one who is offering himself to the Father. And um, you'll notice this one, for example, has colors. Most chasubles have some kind of color that goes with it. <coughs> you know, green for ordinary time, red for martyrs over certain seasons, um, purple for penitential seasons, Advent and Lent, white for celebrations, all kinds of stuff. This one, for example, is blue. So for the Feast of the Blessed Mother, oftentimes something with blue may be incorporated. So today, for example, is the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Tomorrow is Immaculate Heart. And since I have that one, Immaculate Heart of Mary, I'll wear this particular vestment. Um, there's also a prayer for the microphone as you place it on at the end. <laughs> Definitely not a prayer for the microphone. The prayer for the microphone is don't mess up. Um, so normally the microphone is kind of fed through and either clipped or some people will wear it here 
Um, still no prayer for our spiritual masks that we wear. Uh, but these are the last pieces of the vesting of a priest. So as the priest prays, uh, as he should be praying, uh, you just always know before Mass or whatever it is, this is uh, the priest that is praying for what is about to happen, uh, praying for all those present, just as we always ask for the prayers of those who are present. So pray, pray, pray. Pray hard, play hard, as we often said in seminary. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. hope it's helpful. Ask Father Friday. See you next week. <laughs>